Professor Gary Duffy will stay with us so that in case anyone thinks of a question, we'll just go now, though, because we're, we're, we're absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor um, Faisal Sharif. He is Professor of Translational Cardiovascular Medicine and Innovation at University of Galway and Consultant Interventional Cardiologist at CLT University Healthcare Group. Uh, Professor Sharif will talk about cardiovascular clinical research and specifically about the impact of research on patient well-being. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Emer. Uh, so, as introduced, I'm Faisal Sharif. I'm one of an interventional cardiologist. My task this evening is to talk about cardiovascular research program overview, but I would call it building a cardiovascular program for the last 10 years. Um, the title is By the People, For the People, and I think uh, this theme will come across as I, I speak about the presentation. So the phone makes sense this. So at, the, at our university, uh, our strategic objective for research and innovation uh, is based on three key ingredients. It's the purpose, people, and place. Uh, purpose is about um, improving health of the uh, humanity and community and also uh, helping the economy. In terms of the people, our people are very um, creative in their thinking and collaborative in their approach. And the place is very dynamic. It's a vibrant place on the edge of Europe connecting globally. Uh, but I would also add a fourth aspect to it, which is partnership, both internal and external. And I believe it is these four elements uh, that has helped Ireland, specifically Galway, in achieving a medical technology, one of the best medical technology hubs in, in, uh, in the world. I think we have to turn this way. So let's start about place. You have heard a lot about Galway. Uh, I think Mark spoke about it earlier as well. Uh, it is one of the uh, 18 uh, of the top 25 medtech companies are in, in Ireland, uh, in Galway. 80% of the global stents are produced here. And therefore, having a cardiovascular research center where there is cardiovascular expertise, manufacturing, and R&D is absolutely crucial. 75% of the orthopedic knee implants are in, in, in Ireland, 50% of the world ventilators, you had a very nice presentation earlier, and 33% of the world uh, contact lenses. There are 40,000 people employed in this sector, which is one of the highest in, uh, per uh, capita in Europe, and we have 12.5 billion euro export, which is only 9% of our total exports, but if you, so there is a lot of room for improvement. Uh, but I think it's not just that the uh, Galway has come to that part because of a significant investment uh, from the university. So if you look at all the programs in the last 20 to 25 years, you will see that in 1998 we started the Bachelor in Biomedical Engineering. Uh, NCBS was a multidisciplinary center with engineers, uh, scientists working together along with clinicians. Regenerative medicine was established in 2003 with Professor O'Brien and Frank Barry, and I was very fortunate to be involved, and I did my PhD in regenerative medicine. Uh, I think 2008, we had the um, setting up of clinical research facility, and we have heard a lot about it, which was an HRB-funded entity uh, as well. In 2010, 2011, when I started my job in the university here, we founded the, co-founded the uh, BioInnovate Ireland program with Mark Brazzi, Pat Morgan, Sandra Ganley. And the program has been extremely successful. You heard a lot about that earlier today in 2013, Insight, and then I think in 2015, Kurum. And I think uh, we're very fortunate to be involved in Kurum and have been a funded investigator with Kurum. And I think Professor Pandit is going to talk about that after my presentation. And I think more recently, we were very uh, fortunate to have a Carib Core Lab set up by a significant university investment. So if you look at all the programs that are here in the last 25 years, there are two main themes. Number one is medical device innovation, uh, and number two is clinical trials. And I think that's where most of the investment from the university has gone in the last 25 years. That has enabled Galway to be one of the major leading uh, hubs. 
So these are the uh, invest state investments from HEA, from uh, SFI, Enterprise Ireland, HRB, have been the key contributors towards this investment. The people. So I think I was the first uh, appointed cardiovascular uh, uh, kind of uh, senior lecturer with a uh, role in the hospital and in the university, and that was in 2010. I think in 2016, we had a lot of discussions with the university and we appointed, uh, or we identified and then uh, got Professor William Wines to move to Galway. That was in 2016. I mean, that opened our access to one of the leading cardiovascular uh, meetings, which is EuroPCR. We set up a master's program at that stage uh, in conjunction with EuroPCR. In 2016, also, we had uh, Darren Milet, who was then appointed a 50% senior lecturer uh, in the university and has been uh, very good with the structural heart program for, for Galway. In 2018, we had Professor uh, Bill McAvoy, who is an academic professor in preventive cardiology. It was a setting up of National Institute of Preventive Cardiology and ITC, and then Bill's appointment was instrumental at that time. Then subsequently in 2020, we had three appointments of uh, Professor uh, Patrick Sorais, uh, Professor uh, Yashi Yanuma, and Professor Osama Suleiman, who moved from Rotterdam to Galway to set up a core lab function and a clinical trial sponsorship role for Galway, something that we have never done before uh, in, in, in Galway. All right, I think I'll go one back. Uh, so, what my primary role at the moment is to help with the clinical trial site function. We're about coordinating cardiovascular clinical trials, and I'm very pleased and proud to say that now the team has grown quite significantly. We have nearly 10 people employed, uh, which, is, uh, which is phenomenal. I think something you will not see in any other institution or any other hospital in Ireland. I think having uh, FTEs that are dedicated to uh, dealing with patients, uh, engaging with patients, providing information about the clinical trials, and then also making sure that the treatments are delivered on time, follow-ups, and data entry is really crucial. So we've been um, uh, applauded for having excellent data entry, excellent records, I think something that you would not see in, uh, in other centers. So we've been very fortunate that we've been able to achieve this uh, in Galway. And this is all led by Eileen Cohn uh, and her team. I mean, in, and from William's research, William is an SFI professor, and his research is really focusing on um, trigger, uh, uh, trigger mechanisms for vulnerable patient and for uh, a vulnerable plaque. And I think uh, he has established smart sensors in Galway, and uh, I think his program has been led by Sandra Ganley and more recently David Conley. And I think a lot of uh, very talented people are working with them. I think then we, I mentioned in 2020, we were able to get Professor Sarais and his team over from cardiolysis. And uh, together, between all of them, including myself, Darren, we have over 130 years of experience in running clinical trials, which is quite phenomenal. Uh, I think we are now sponsoring three clinical trials from the University of Galway and uh, enrolling patients within Europe and USA. Uh, Professor Sarai's program will not be successful if there wasn't the real team that is working behind the scene. And I would like to mention Mary Angel Morale, who is a senior uh, clinical trial coordinator, uh, Irene uh, Kuit, who is a clinical research operational lead, and of course, Elaine Breslin, who's the program manager. So I think uh, this has been uh, a great to have a very talented team running clinical trials. Uh, and I think one of the key things is to attract all these people over to, to Galway, which has been in very, really significant. But you can see the number of people who are working now is now phenomenal. I mean, in total, just within the core lab and the sponsor trial, there are 53 people employed, which are being uh, paid through the income generated from the clinical trials. Uh, it's, it's absolutely astonishing. And I think if you look at the number of people, the academic people who have moved over from all over the world, Middle East, uh, China, Japan, India, uh, I, I think it just shows the diversity of the group at this stage and uh, the best talent uh, in town. So it's a big group now. 
Uh, and what I want to emphasize is that we are all connected. Uh, we have a common goal, but our roles are slightly different. So from, uh, from my side, it's all about the site activities and running clinical trials and making all of that uh, possible. Uh, William is more about supporting the clinical trial through research grants and also looking at uh, trigger mechanisms and trying to establish the ways to prevent and early interventions for, for treatment. And Professor Sarai's uh, especially Yash, Professor Anuma and Professor Suleiman are looking at the core lab activities for all the clinical trials. So all the uh, diagnostic tests that are done all over Europe are being transferred over to Galway for validation. So I think that's a, that's a very important function. And Professor Sarai is, is one of the consultants for core lab and has been instrumental in bringing some of the key trials and mechanistic trials to, to, uh, to Galway. So we are all connected, and I think, uh, I think that's, that's important with a common goal. We have interdependence, but we have separate roles as well. So I think I'd like to mention a few words about the partnership. So I mentioned uh, the people, I mentioned the, uh, the place, and I think partnership is important because partnership brings sustainability. If you are working in a complex environment where you have hospital, university, funding agencies such as SFI, HRB, it's really important that we have a common goal and there's a sharing of vision. And to me, this is the most important part and the most difficult part. Trying to have a common vision uh, is very hard to get. At, diff at a one-time point, Hospital may have different priorities, university have different priorities, but trying to bring them and align them to a common goal is the key thing, and that requires a lot of diplomacy, persistence, perseverance. Uh, I, I think it, that's the key thing. And once all these stakeholders are aligned, sustainability to a program will come. And I think we're very proud to say that that sustainability is now becoming very visible in our programs, that we, we're not... Uh, concerned that long term, how are we going to sustain these people? So you see a lot of people being employed, so where is all of these people are currently being funded through research grants, but there needs to be a more sustainable method of sustaining these people and employing them. So I give you an example. So uh, I think for the last uh, 10 years, we've been working towards this project. It's been quite a while. It's, and I think once you achieve it, it's a legacy program, but I think it's really hard to make that change happen in the healthcare system. So we are trying to establish a, a research facility for the last uh, decade. Uh, we have uh, patients who are coming into the hospital, the SELTA group, that's where the access to the patient is. We have a regulatory compliant CRFG, uh, which is funded by HRB. So you already have two stakeholders. You have the hospital, you have the HRB, and then you have again the university and you have people like myself who are employed and who have the expertise to do the procedure, interventional radiologists, interventional cardiologists, vascular surgeons, to be able to do the procedures. And then you have Science Foundation Ireland that is enabling us to now bring cutting edge equipment that is needed to do the, the procedures. If you go into any hospital, you work in a cath lab or you work in an operating theater, you will see that there is a massive waiting list there are too many patients to be treated. And to do dedicated research, mechanistic research, you need dedicated equipment and staff. And therefore, there is a significant commitment and, and investment. And that's what we have seen in the last 10 years. So for example, we have been able to get a state-of-the-art CT scan and a cath lab, which is dedicated. And you will see that there is a funding available from Science Foundation Ireland. 11 million has been supported by the SELTA group, which is HSE Capital States, and then there is 2 million commitment from the uh, University of Galway. So there is commitment, and that means there is a common vision that we're going to achieve this together long term. So there are some cutting edge equipment. We have 3D printing facilities. We have now robotic PCI, which all these programs are going to start very shortly. I mean, there was an earlier talk about thrombectomy for, uh, for the West. So now we have a CT scanner. We're able to scan these patients, and we have the expertise to take the thrombus out because we do it through primary PCI all the time. We have 
you know, we do about 350 primary PCIs, which is a heart attack, and we take the clot out. So I think why can't we do it for a brain which is not moving? Uh, the heart is moving. So, I mean, we, we have the expertise. We have interventional radiologists. We have interventional cardiologists. We can put the team together, and we can do a program, start a program, 9 to 5, using the infrastructure that we have. So equipment enables us to start new programs. And I think, again, sustainability, you can leverage. So now you have the equipment, you have the know-how. Industry is now coming on board, and now we have just put in an application with six multinationals, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, uh, Cragana, uh, GE, Siemens, uh, uh, and Indotronics to SFI, where there is a collaborative spoke application with Kuram and Insight. So, so there is leverage between Insight. Insight is going to be used for data analytics in healthcare. Kuram is going to bring his expertise, and we have uh, equipment and industry to work together on research projects that are really going to be useful and have a, a real impact on patient outcomes. So the purpose is really to improve outcomes for patients. Uh, the purpose is really to benefit humanity, society, and economy, right? So we have been very fortunate to run clinical trials. We have run over 40 clinical trials with multinationals. We have done first in man, where we have to do the first thing from the very start. You have to write down the protocol, the procedures, how you're going to do safety first. You have to prove it, and then you go into CE mark or regulatory approved trials. So we have done all of that from different levels of multinationals. We have run uh, trials with CoreLab, which have been instrumental uh, bringing in new trials and technologies as well, which are, are university-sponsored. So this is just an example of some of the trials that we've been doing here. So in the first picture here, we are putting a sensor at the back of the heart in the pulmonary artery. So that sensor in patients who have heart failure, 65 million people globally have heart failure. The cost of treating heart failure is at the moment uh, 150 uh, billion, which is phenomenal cost. It was 110 in 2010, and it's 150 at this stage annually globally. That's much money we spend on treating heart failure. And one of the biggest costs is when the patient comes back for readmissions because they have advanced heart failure. Within three months, patients are back with shortness of breath. So now if you can put a sensor in their pulmonary arteries, you can monitor their pressures remotely, and we can make changes to their treatments just by giving them a phone call. Important thing is patient becomes part of that treatment. And patient is empowered. Patient is now taking more uh, care about their treatments. And, you know, uh, and I think that really has changed the outcome. So if you just look at the 28 patients that we treated with this technology, those 28 patients had no admissions in one year in, as compared to four to five admissions per year, four in the morning, and going to ICU and CCU. So the so technologies like this have really transformed what we are doing. Treatments for hypertension. One in three adults have high blood pressure. Total globally, 1.2 billion people. One third of the world population has high blood pressure. So we treat them with tablets, but is it fair to give somebody four or five tablets at the age of 40? It has psychological impact. Uh, patients are non-compliant. Pa high blood pressure doesn't cause any symptoms. But treatments which are neuromodulating are being tested in Galway at the moment to see can we do treatments to reduce these patients' blood pressure in addition to their medication. Again, patient involvement gets really uh, crucial in this. And, and then again, working uh, with some of the multinationals, looking at new stents, new technologies, working with Professor Sarai's lab. We're looking at putting in now local therapies rather than putting in a stent. Stent transformed the way we do things for humans. Now it's become a social thing. If you go at any dinner, you say, how many you have? Four? I have five? I have six? It's such a common thing at this stage. People talk about coronary stents. But what they don't realize is that it's a permanent implant. And I think if you can deliver the drug without the implant is the goal. And I think we're getting there now. We have latest technologies where the balloons are carrying the drugs, and we can deliver the drugs without placing the stents and with intracoronary imaging we can see what happens at the time of the, of the balloon, and we can see follow-up outcomes, which are very encouraging results. So cutting-edge technologies and are being tested for patients who have coronary artery disease. And finally, we're looking at 
the uh, patients who are not suitable for open heart surgery for an aortic valve replacement. So you can go into your femoral artery through the groin and you can place a stent in the heart without opening the chest, which has been transformative. And it has, I mean, my first patient that we treated was 90 year old lady and uh, her 91 year old friend was later saved and she performed a cardiac arrest on that patient. So it is really bringing quality of life back to people uh, at the age of 90 years of age. So it has been quite, uh, quite uh, exciting. Uh, the overall collective impact of the group just for one year, I mean, 252 publications in one year, uh, publishing on average one manuscript every 1.5 days, collective impact, field weighted citation impact 3.29%, it means our publications are being cited 229% more than the average citations anywhere in the world. Collective impact factor of more than 500, and two of the three researchers who are on the highly cited researchers list are in the group. 40 clinical trials, more than 4,000 patients have been treated in Europe and USA, which are sponsored by Galway University. So I believe the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I firmly believe that. I think it's about building teams. It's about building partnerships. It's about working together towards a common goal and a common vision. And I'm very proud to be a part of this. Uh, we have developed a center of excellence. I know we want to get to the destination of having all the equipment and infrastructure but sometimes journey is the most exciting part. Uh, we have now purpose, people, place, partnership, and above all, patience. And I think, just to summarize, we have a, a cardiovascular center which is aligned to the ecosystem. We have developed partnerships which will bring sustainability. We have attracted a lot of international talent, diversity, a very good group. We are now a center of excellence, and we believe we can be sustainable together. Thank you. Thank you.